Hello, ladies and gentlemen, especially those of you who are tuning in from your devices at home. Welcome to the Singapore University of Technology and Design Open House 2022. If you think you are the next Zaha Hadid and you're going to design you the next London Aquatic Centre, this is the session for you. This is Ask ASD, Architecture and Sustainable Design. This, uh, this panel will be chaired by Professor Tai Li Xiang, the Head of Pillar for Architecture and Sustainable Design, and he will be joined by industry guests and alumni. From RSP Architects, Planners and Engineers, Mr. Xia Chi Kian. From Type Zero Architecture and our alumnus, Mr. Chia Sheng Wei. From Woha Architects and our alumnus, Ms. Michelle Goh. And our ASD Senior su Student, Ms. Megan Lee. First, we'll start with a short video about the ASD pillar. Imagine buildings that generate sustainable energy rather than just use energy. Today, the problems that we are facing have to do with rapid urbanization and climate change, which have very wide repercussions throughout the world. In order to tackle these grand challenges, we need a multidisciplinary approach that relies on technology and science and methods that can improve sustainability. In AST SUTD, our students gain a Bachelor of Science degree instead of a Bachelor of Arts degree, and then they receive a Master of Architecture degree. Our students learn the technical capabilities very early on in their education. In their first term, when they enter the university, they will learn programming and scripting. And then in their architecture education, they will learn design, building technology, computation, and history theory culture, also going to artificial intelligence and data analytics within their architecture education. In ASD, our students use project-based learning for everything. For every subject, what they learn is implemented into design projects. And with these design projects, we look at these issues holistically in a multidisciplinary way. This means when our students graduate, they do not focus on a limited problem. The graduates of AST become architects. They have the technical and scientific knowledge behind it to make these solutions real. We have our sustainable design option studios where we give our students the opportunity to work with really good designers from around the world. Either our students travel to, to these places and work with world-known architects, Pritzker Prize winners, which is a, the most prestigious award in architecture, such as Sajima or Herzog and Demeron. Or we invite well-known architects globally from anywhere in the world to come and work with our students to open their minds, to get feedback on their projects from different points of view. If you want to create sustainable communities through design, through innovation, with the help of technology, and improve architecture with new practices, please join us. I am Bigetunchar, Associate Professor at Architecture and Sustainable Design. Well, a uh, very good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> well, uh, I'm very, very comfortable here with amongst my old friends and students and ex-students. Uh, some I haven't met, but again, I think there's something that binds us together, and that is the blood of architecture. So I'm going to share briefly with you a few things about <clears throat> um, architecture and pertaining to ASD. Uh, just again, a short introduction of myself. I've been a practicing architect for 30 years now. Uh, and it was only last year that I joined SUTD. Uh, so I will share with you a few things uh, of what I gleaned from my own experience. So um, yeah, I'm quite sure a, a lot of you know where this is taken from. But as a child, I mean, I've, I fell in love with things like that. Of course, way back, you don't have such sophisticated pictures. You have Star Trek and you have maybe starting or Star Wars. But again, that was the generation we grew up where, again, we're looking at things that are very macro, uh, things that are formed about cities, about future science, technology coming all together and continues to fascinate me. So I would say my choice of deciding to join architecture uh, was largely because of my love and passion for 
something that I want to build for the future of mankind. I know it sounds big, but I do that dare to say that I think uh, we are still doing that. So if you have that dream, if you possess that vision, uh, do come. So what is architecture? A lot of people try to define that. I don't think we still have a single definition. Uh, but I want to tell you that uh, a lot of people think of SUTD as very technology, very science-based, very physics. But the truth is that we are, I think, uh, still believing that architecture has got to be a balance of a few things. First and foremost, it it got to serve human needs. So it's about humanities. So our course uh, do insist a certain degree of uh, the curriculum to be based on humanities, arts and social sciences, and particularly in the founding uh, terms. So that is important for you to know that. And architecture is, of course, art. Again, people think of us as uh, robots and designing things that are very scientific and no art in it. Not true. Uh, we don't talk about it, but again, if you have a chance to see our students' work, there's certainly no shortage of the artistic expression, creativity in the form making, in shape making, and spatial making. So this is, um, again, something that I want to tell you that is something that we believe in. It's certainly technology. Now, if you talk about uh, architecture today versus architecture 30 years ago, uh, technology has changed dramatically. And the more we are stepping into digital age, this is unavoidable. And we're starting to see buildings that move. So buildings are no longer static. And of course, ultimately, it has to solve problems, right? So architecture is very, very much part and parcel of this global fight with uh, climate change, uh, global warming. We are fully, fully in the eye of the storm, if I may say. So much so that our experience re is relevant to the world. Uh, I have the fortune of uh, being in the middle of the Green Building uh, Movement and campaign, had a chance to chair the World Green Building Council. And I can tell you that what we can bring to the table as an architect, as an urbanist, is highly relevant and very important for the next uh, uh, fight against uh, climate change. So a few words about what ASD believe in. We believe in the novelty and freedom of research and learning. Uh, later on, you'll hear from our alumni and students. Uh, we emphasize the importance of research and learning because this is really the key to architectural design. You can't design something without these two things. We continue to learn from every project that we do, but to do this, we need to afford all of you, our students, uh, the freedom to explore. So this is something we firmly believe in. And of course, we need to then allow open and diverse design approaches through deep collaboration. Because as you collaborate, you start to be open to ideas, open to creative suggestions as to how we can make something better. So that's important for our learning process. Ultimately, the litmus test lies in whether your solution actually transforms lives. And that's where we look, talk about impact. And lastly, <clears throat> in ASC, we hope to set the trend for future of the built environment, not by ourselves, but together with industry partners. So the ASD experience uh, is uh, steep in maker culture, cohort learning, and global exposure. I know that at this point in time, uh, we can't really travel out easily, but I, it, I think that's going to change very quickly. But more importantly is that with um, <clears throat> Advent in Technology, with uh, Campus X experience that we talk about, linking up with uh, global knowledge exchange, I think this is increasingly going to be more and more interesting and diverse. So just to cover a few more things on where we're focusing in terms of ASD for most of our work and our research, is in these four areas, circular city, uh, future health, climate change mitigation, and future building. Uh, these are kind of like the top issues that the built environment faces, and that's where we want to be. So I'm just going to uh, show you uh, <laughs> some of the projects that later on you will hear about, so maybe I will not go into uh, detail, but certainly, uh, some of our students have gone on to make waves uh, internationally. So here we have uh, 
Arcasia Thesis of the Year Award, uh, where Shen Wei will talk. I think you will talk a bit about it. Yeah. So this is a gold award at the Asia level, right? I, I even the two of us never get there. We never make it there. So it is a remarkable achievement. And Michelle, later on, perhaps you can also talk a bit about this, which is another Global Design Graduate Show Award at the international level. We're not talking about Singapore anymore, right? It's about, all right, I'll leave Michelle to talk about it. <laughs> and more recently, we have another student, uh, uh, Gi Yang, that won the Fentress Global Challenge 2021, third place. Yeah, third place, not first place. But... Think about it. His project is about Aviation 2050, imagining future adaptive anti-fragile airport terminals. How many of us get to design airport? You haven't done it, right? Airport design? Part of, Part of it. Okay, sorry. My correction. You'll hear more from him. <clears throat> I haven't done it. So imagine our student can do that. It's because of, again, the right faculty experience and then industry input that allows him to bring the design to a level that is recognized internationally. So last but not least, uh, Benedict just uh, finishing his MRC. I, I leave this as an end slide because I was so fascinated by this project uh, when he presented. It is about dealing with the issue of permafrost uh, right at the north uh, above Russia to deal with issue, multiple complex issue of housing a community that's threatened by weather, using most um, advanced technology or robotics automation to build buildings in the extremely harsh condition and dealing with new materials that are highly sustainable. It's just amazing. I mean, we don't do things just within here. We do things uh, internationally. So I leave you my email address. Uh, please feel free to contact me. Uh, I know he laughed, but it's important because I realize the students uh, actually have a lot of questions, and you don't have somewhere that you can ask. And especially from people who have been there, done that, and give you good counsel, wise counsel. Uh, I think we need to actually uh, narrow the gap. So maybe you should also leave your email address. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with that, uh, I end my uh, short brief and introduction. I'm going to go on um, down the way to ask my panelists so you can share a few things about their work, their experience. And Chicken has been a long-time friend. I try to avoid saying old friend. Uh, at times, we were competitor in fighting for the same project, but remain good friend. I mean, that's the camaraderie of the industry. Uh, we stay in touch, and I'm going to his office next Tuesday. So, uh, Chikian, maybe share with our audience, uh, young aspirants who are looking in possibility of joining architecture, and more specifically, joining SUTD. Uh, what would you say to them? Uh, please feel free. Yeah. Hi, hi, hi everyone. Uh, okay, I, I, I don't have slides, huh? but uh, maybe... If I stand up, you can see the better scars. So, so that's, that's the other spectrum. Right? Uh, that's a real spectrum, right? But, uh, I mean, if I cast back what, probably 40 years, uh, when we started on the journey of, of architecture, right? I think the, the challenges remains. But I think what's, what's fantastic is the opportunities has, has, is, is tremendous. I mean, like the last one, permafrost. Uh, we just got off the jury on, uh, I mean, we were on the jury for uh, the uh, um, a master plan competition in Russia. And, you know, when, when we see the submissions, you, you, you'd be actually quite amazed that uh, architecture, you know, has, has really gone beyond. And, and, and like what Li Xiang say, it's not, it's not an award that has, we have gone Asia, we have gone international. I think the whole opportunities is really out there, and I'm 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 very, frankly very very glad to to, to be here today because we, we, we have in our office, uh, probably uh, students I mean graduates are cohort from 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 the first cohort till now, and I think the the, the wonderful thing about engaging with 
this paper or, or with them is really uh, the platform that SUTD has, uh, where, where we're really collaborative, you're really project learning and, and everything else. And, and we all know, you know, it, it doesn't stop, right? That's just the beginning. And, and for me it's in itself, that's, that's how it goes. You know, we, we, we've been continuously learning for 40 years. And I think that's the, that's the beauty of it. The, 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 the issue, because it's all about human, it's all about environment, it's perpetual. So, so that's, I'm, I'm, I'm coming in from an industry point, like that, you know, 40 years, that's why I talk about better scars. But, but in some, some ways, when we are out there, you, you, we then how do we manage all the other subsequent, uh, issues that, or parameters that's going to be brought into your design. So, so I, think, I think that's something which the spark will be here, right? And, and, and hopefully, uh, you, you will continue to, to really ignite, you know? Not just in Singapore, but, but all over the world, yeah. I, 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 I really uh, look forward to uh, having more of you all in this journey together, yeah. Thanks, uh, Chikin. Uh, actually, I should remind, uh, sorry, I should actually uh, tell you that uh, Chikin is MD of RSP, Architects and Engineers, uh, and is uh, one of the leading firms in Singapore. And which project that comes to mind? Very easy, LaSalle uh, Arts College, this one. Yeah, so I'm sure there are many, many more exciting works that his office is doing. So. This man's weight, words carry weight. Just want to let you know. All right. Uh, let me go on to Sheng Wei. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Sheng Wei. I am an alumni. Um, I just graduated last year, and I'm currently working at uh, Type Zero Architecture for about like four months. Yeah, so I think in this sharing, I just want to briefly, briefly talk about like my experience here in SUTD and how it kind of like shaped me or prepared me for the industry. So um, Michelle and I, we only agreed to like have a maximum of five slides uh, because like we were preparing it amidst our busy schedule as like architects, as everyone knows. So um, it's just a short sharing from us. So I think um, this first slide actually shows an opportunity that I had um, in ASD in which I got the chance to visit um, Switzerland, Basel, um, the studio of Herzog de Mion, um, with a group of students here as well as a collaboration with um, the Kyoto Institute of Technology students. So over there, we were trying to, um, we were posed with this question of how we can use social media to actually reinterpret um, architecture. And we got the opportunity to visit the different kinds of um, architecture that Herzog de Miron had designed, as well as by other famous uh, architects in that region of Basel. So I think to me, that was a great highlight in the sense that uh, we really got to um, exchange thoughts and ideas with the Japanese students who, who thought really differently from us, and there was a lot of exchange in terms of culture as well. And of course, um, yeah, me, me liking um, backpacking and stuff, I went there like seven days earlier to like climb mountains, do sketches, and did some exploration on my own. So I think that's what um, architecture is really about in terms of um, experiencing space for yourself. And I think there's lots of opportunities here in terms of um, professors bringing you overseas. Oh, but now with the COVID pandemic, um, yeah, it's a bit sad. But I think, yeah, there, there is always this um, slant in ESD to, to bring, either bring the international experience to us or to go out to the international experience, which I really appreciated. So locally, I, what I really liked about um, the program here was that we had the chance to actually interact with professors from all over the world. So that was really uh, eye-opening to me. Um, our, pro our professors here are very diverse, and we get to hear their experiences, which really shaped my own uh, architectural learning. Yeah. So um, yeah, this is just uh, a bit of my thesis in which I had the opportunity to um, pick up some skills here, which I um, learned how to use uh, artificial intelligence in my design um, and explored how um, AI can actually shape um, the way we design buildings um, in this uh, specific use case to actually be able to 
um, deal with big data, deal with lots of user inputs, and to propose a framework in which architectural design can actually be more democratic in that process. Yeah, so I think one thing about um, this school is that we are very forward-looking. Um, we try our best to um, foresee how, or like, to use future technologies into our design um, to kind of postulate what could possibly happen if these technologies are integrated in the design process. And that was something which I appreciated as well. So currently, um, I'm working at uh, Type Zero Architecture, and um, it's actually like, um, the boss is actually, has actually three companies. So um, <laughs> I'm also doing like stuff in superstructure, which is the fabrication, digital fabrication side of things. So this was a project in which we had to design the interior space um, as an installation, um, where you see these uh, complicated, like tryptophobic uh, patterns all over the ceiling, and, and these are made of plywood. So I think one thing about uh, my education here, which prepared me for this, was how uh, we actually learn tools in which we manage uh, data to design. And this is something that really can't be done um, with a traditional uh, architectural background. If we were to do this by pen and paper, like how are we going to fabricate it? It will be a, a nightmare to do so. But um, I think with my experience here and um, learning how to pick up, um, learning to pick up some skills in terms of uh, visual scripting, this actually helped me to to manage the large, uh, um, large amounts of data in in terms of um, the form creation and the detailing, and immediately translate that into digital fabrication, uh, where the data is passed on to CNC machines, which cut individual strips of. Uh, which cut plywood into individual strips which exactly fit the dimensions you see in the model. So that is the level of precision that uh, I was enabled to do with the skill set that I picked up here. So that was like uh, three months ago, but quickly the project is moving on, and I think just last week I went down for a site visit, and um, part of the project is up. And I think the experience of actually seeing your design being like, manifested in real life is really powerful, and I was like really inspired to um, maybe work a bit harder after <laughs> seeing, seeing, seeing it going up. Yeah. And yeah, it's still in progress. I can't wait for it to, to finish. And I think another project um, which I was working on uh, was this uh, very glitzy, uh, glamorous looking tower. Uh, not in Singapore, because I think it wouldn't comply with a lot of uh, building standards in Singapore. <laughs> yeah, but um, this tower was actually one in which we had to. Um, deal with a lot of complexity as well, um, where we, the client really wanted something that looked like a, a jewel that would have a lot of reflections. And imagine if you're doing this manually, um, like positioning each and every one of those pieces uh, onto the facade. It's quite a nightmare, really. But what um, the approach that we did in, my, in our studio was to actually um, use a, a code, a script, to generate each of these uh, individual faces according to certain constraints, so that you have some amount of um, like certain variations, but at the same time, enough complexity and, and variation for it, for it to look different um, when, the, when the light uh, shines on the facade. So yeah, I think um, this kind of encapsulates my short sharing for now. Um, if you've got any questions, you can ask later, and I'll hand the time over to Michelle. Thanks, Shenwei. Michelle, over to you. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Michelle, and I'm from Woha Architects. Then, uh, oh, okay. Um, so I'm from Woha Architects, and now I'm handling a lot of uh, mixed-use development and also master planning, and. Um, all of those experience that I wanted to share is about, uh, rather than the project that I did, I wanted to uh, sh show you my experience in SUTD. And it's a very memorable and unforgettable. And I believe all of our learning experience is beyond that classroom experience and also by experiencing all those real life architecture with a lot of great friends and also professors. So uh, starting from um, my studio exposure, so SUTD provide us with a lot of opportunity, like option studios. And I have a great opportunity to interact with uh, Professor Rene Tan. Uh, he's one of the um, leading industry in architecture. Um, and he brought us to Florence for our studio trip. And it was very mind-blowing and also learning like Renaissance architecture, which is 
quite traditional, but I really appreciate how the architecture evolved because it's not always about the forward-looking architecture, but we also need to reflect on the past. So it's a balance so between Western and on the, on the right side, uh, you can see is my experience with all my studio mates, uh, collaboration with uh, Takenaka Corporation, which is one of the leading construction um, industry in Japan. And we manage uh, to visit a lot of places, learning Japanese architecture, and also doing a lot of projects with uh, our studio mates. And this is what makes us uh, different between uh, another architect. Um, besides that, we also have a lot of industry and uh, projects exposure. And actually, I really believe this experience outside the studio really shape what we become as an architect. And um, I have a, a whole a lot of memorable experience uh, doing a lot of projects, uh, including the Capstone, which collaborate with DP Architects, learning about PPVC. And uh, this is uh, not a very, this is not a very, uh, it's a very uh, um, immediate uh, topic that is uh, discussed in architectural industry, where we can do a PPVC, which is a prefabricated. Uh, and DP trusts us uh, to collaborate with them with this research. And also, I have an opportunity to work at Shigeru One Architects, and it was one of my uh, best memories uh, in SUTD. And uh, if you guys know, um, Shigeru One is one of the Pisca Prize winner, and it was an honor to work there. And also, uh, besides going out, uh, SUTD also brought us a very, um, uh, a very unique experience interacting with Mario Bota, uh, one of the one of the uh, pinnacle of like architecture industry, you can say that yeah. And besides those uh, architectural related project, uh, if you guys have a lot of interest in like multidisciplinary, including like uh, collaborating with engineering, and also like uh, creative industry, we uh, we also have the opportunity to join a lot of project. Um, especially, I'm quite interested in lighting design and also some. Uh, art-related installation, I, and I have the opportunity to work with another pillar, like including EPD and ISDD, and we got a merit award for this highlight uh, bicentennial collection. And last but not least, um, after uh, Shangwei uh, experience to you uh, guys uh, regarding his project, I wanted to share with you like the wholesome. Uh, culture of SUTD and a lot of uh, memorable times where they invite the prof and we can interact with professors from around the world and also the hands-on experience in the fabrication lab where I'm sure Shangwei and also uh, you experience a lot of uh, fabrication um, like problems and we tackle it on the spot and this is what shapes us and uh, how we bring this knowledge in our industry, in the building industry, it really enriched us. And also, you can see how the professors uh, bring us around uh, in the, these studio trips, and even in it's a very good culture that cultivates, and it's really needed in architecture industry. I feel. So uh, last but not least, we also have a lot of great times together. Like you see us jumping in front of the. Uh, Santa Maria Novella uh, station, uh, Stadium with Prof. Nathan. Yeah, so it's a very great experience in SUTD. Then feel free to ask me if there is any question. Yeah, now I pass on. Uh, Michelle, you want to just say a few words about your successful thesis oh. uh, project? Um, just to summarize, actually, it's a very meaningful project for me because I, I, grew, I grew up in Jakarta. And uh, as you know, maybe like from news, um, Indonesia is moving their capital to Kalimantan and I got this opportunity to learn and also research more and also redesign this capital and it's a very huge opportunity for me coming from Indonesia to get this opportunity with Professor Thomas Schoffer yeah. and recently I won a, a global graduate design uh, with a lot of people from Bartlett and also like a lot of uh, other inst international institution and I'm really grateful for that. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Uh, so Megan is still with us, Term 7. Uh, I thought it's important for you to hear from a student perspective who are still studying with us. Uh, Megan, please. 
Hi, I'm Megan. I'm currently a Term 7 ASD student, so I'll be graduating this September with my Bachelor of Science. Um, so I think uh, I'll just talk about like the studio experience that I've been experiencing for the past few terms and also like my experience in ASD. So um, as you know, we've, we're still in COVID, so I actually started my pillar in the midst of the COVID pandemic and even though like a lot of opportunities have been like removed from me like the overseas trips that Michelle and Chen Wei have been on to I haven't been on those yet but I still feel like the opportunities that were presented to me even with this scenario uh, didn't compromise my learning at all I still felt like I learned a lot and I gained a lot of like um, applicable experience like um, and there's also a lot of opportunities for me to dwell into like different aspects of design and architecture because architecture isn't just about building. To me, architecture is about like the space, about how we experience like space, not just in buildings but also like in smaller, uh, smaller, smaller, smaller stuff like in furniture, in like maybe a small pavilion or a corridor even. But um, I think through the experience of, in ASD, I've been really able to like try a lot of things and like learn what I like and learn like my strengths and my weaknesses and also like how can I apply like design and sustainable design especially in like the future world and like how I can design a proper and like a proper livable world that I would be like happy to live in yeah okay while well, you're still uh, uh, with the mic uh, this question from Kayleen is about how would you compare the academic rigor of the ASD course as compared to the other pillars in SUTD. Uh, maybe Michelle and Shen, we can chime in as well. I'll, I'll just begin. Okay, so um, ASD is a little bit different. Uh, so for us, right, in finals weeks especially, you'll see this very huge comparison. Like everyone else is like studying for their exams or whatnot, but ASD students are like the ones doing project work. They're the ones like churning out the final submission for their project. They're doing like posters, they're doing models and stuff. So I think that's like one of the big differences is that in ASD, most of your work is in projects. Like you don't study. Okay, like you do study, but you don't study that much. <laughs> Yeah, but then um, also another difference is that I guess we are more like ASD is about architecture, it's about uh, designing buildings and stuff. So that's one of the main differences also. But there are some similarities. Um, like in the workload, I would guess everyone's about the same, about busy. La. And then uh, there's no particular easy course or no particular hard course. Everyone is about the same workload. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle and Shen Wei, uh, while well, your memory is still fresh. <laughs> yeah, actually, I graduated in the COVID period as well. And like, um, I experienced my master course. Like, one of my profs is in Chicago, Daniel, with Daniel Whitaker. So, like, it's very interesting how we can Zoom and really collaborate from there. And actually, uh, the rigor is. I think uh, all the pillars have each own, like, a uh, different aspect. Um, and I. Uh, I think ASD is a very interesting where we can do things hands-on, right? So, and solve things in collaborative way. And we need to communicate with each other so we can learn from each other as well. How about you, Sung Wei? Uh, I'll be honest, the, the rigor is real. <laughs> it's really uh, not easy, I guess. Because uh, I think a, one thing about architecture is that we need to know how to represent our ideas in a very visual and compelling way. So I think a lot of times, um, the when we imp okay when we impose upon ourselves a certain standard that we want to hit uh, in terms of presenting our project to others because we have a certain pride in our project, it does me sometimes mean that we'll push ourselves to really um, do it and and to the best of our abilities. But of course, this is up to the individual. Um, the, I got friends who are really disciplined with their time and uh, they they sleep really good hours. Um, and still manage to submit something which is uh, good and nice to the professors at the end of the day. So I really think it's uh, up to us because I think in ASD there's a lot more freedom um, in terms of um, what you want to, to deliver at the end of the day. Yeah. So that's just an honest answer from me about the, the rigor. Yeah. So I must say that freedom comes with responsibility as well. Uh, so, uh, well, I, I would link this a little bit to the one of the questions that asks uh, how, how can... Can you elaborate uh, on architecture as a solution? Uh, I guess maybe if I'm f I take the liberty to expand this question is, how do you see architecture actually contribute to solving problems, uh, real-world problems? I, I know it's a bit broad, but uh, 
maybe chicken you like to yeah i i think uh, how should i say uh, to to me i think up to today uh i still frame everything back to first a person then an architect uh, why why that is because i think at the end of the day uh, design is not an end by itself right i mean at the end design is a service so so that's why you know if we equate service and and solutions uh, you are you are trying to use the architecture as a medium as a as a, as a vehicle to to kind of uh, influence or to kind of uh, become the the stage so to speak like, where, where 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 things happen right? and and unless you drive into the essence of being human or, or for that matter a, a, a particular functional needs uh, then I think it, it, it's it's the responsible thing for us as architect to to really then cobble everything together it's not just about the space right? you have to worry about the the senses the the the, the mind the heart you know and 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 uh, perhaps there's 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 no no quick uh, sorry uh, indulge me a little bit uh, we we just came off because it's a new year right so so typically in the new year we will have this so called town hall with 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 our with all our offices you know singapore and global and i i, I kind of gave them a hypothetical the uh, project uh, uh, probably a t- <laughs> I, I i don't know how many of you are familiar with the sandman you know uh, neil gammon uh, i i mean I, I i first came upon his work his first 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 piece of work you know and that was the year i graduated and in all of this, he, he, there's, there's this whole thing about endless, right? And, 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 and I think that therein lies that endless. Right? You, have, you have dreams, delirium, desire, destruction, death, uh, destiny, and, and, and one more. But, but what, 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 why I raised this is because then I put design, you know, it's another D. And, and if we want to elevate design, then, then I think it's important that we, we are really uh, embedded with, with what life is. You know? and, and life is all about living and, 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 and so, so, so I So in that, in that very high conceptual level of things, I, I think it, it's for us to, to really question or, or to really bring everything else back to renaissance right i mean last time when you talk about renaissance it's, 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 it's everything yeah. and and so i i think if if we were to put ourselves into that it is in search of something bigger than what design is i meaning you put aside your ego you put aside your your your, your whatever you know i i, I think it Ultimately, for me, it is it is is a service, and 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 if it is a service, then I think that it's not an obligation anymore. You know, it's it's something of a higher order that you you you, you need to make a difference and leave whatever a place or, or a, 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 it, it has to be better than if you were to not get in in it. So 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 I think that's. Uh, I, I don't know whether I, I answered that question, but, but I, I think that's something that we have, we have to have to, to and, and not just about technology, you know, not just about whatever, but, but I think that that service ultimately will, will lead one to look for the solution. Yeah. Thanks, Chicken. You are obviously in the zone now. <laughs> uh, but I mean, not to again, not to make light of your statement, is that uh, architecture is an end, endless search, uh, both in solutions as well as soul searching as well. So, which is why people like him and me reaching a stage will all be asking more questions about 
the same question that you ask, how can architecture be a solution, right? Is it just a brick and mortar? No. It affects everything in life, right? If you name me a person who will not live in a building, I think I can hardly think of one now. So we are all surrounded by building, we are all surrounded by architecture, and therefore it is ever-present, it is never going away, it has to be a part of the solution in life. Uh, now, uh, we have suddenly a lot more questions. I'm going to quickly just, not necessarily everybody answered one question, just going to randomly go through. Uh, what are the possible career pathways after graduating from ASD? Uh, maybe start with Chiki and then uh, I'd like uh, Sheng Wei to talk briefly about working in a small firm and then Michelle in a, in a bigger practice. Yeah, quick one. I, I think the opportunities, frankly, limitless. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the beauty about here, I mean, you, you, you have the breath, right? It's, it's, it's then really where to find that depth. And, and because of how the whole world is, is, is happening now, I, I think the one can find some place, uh, regardless, you know, where you will work to your, to your best potential and you will have a win-win kind of situation with whether is it with the client or with, with the, the job at hand. I, I think it is really up to all of us to, to find something that speaks to your heart and your, your mind. And, and like I say, it's, it's 40 years. Uh, we, we, we are still around, right? We, we, we still seeing so many gaps and so many opportunities that we are hoping more and more young people can, can come in and, and own this space, you know? And, and, and so, uh, take, it, take it really, uh, it's, it's limitless, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Shall we? Yeah, I agree, because uh, I think because buildings are so complicated, there are so many things that you can do or specialize in. Um, at a small firm, you end up doing everything. Uh, like It's kind of overwhelming at times, but I think I kind of requested it because I didn't want to leave uh, behind the, the, the skills that I picked up in, in school. So I requested to work on residential housing projects and at the same time to be in a computational department uh, of, the, of the small firm. Yeah, and I think when I was in the when I am in the computational department, I get to uh, work on like installations, like you saw just now, as well as uh, building facades, as well as um, even master planning projects. Like how do you use uh, scripting, uh, visual scripting, to actually uh, design um, a master plan in that sense? So yeah, I think as uh, what Chicken said, there are lots of opportunities, and it's really uh, what depends on what your specific interest in and where you want to uh, hone your skills in. Yeah. Yeah, Michelle. Uh, continuing from Shang Wei, so I agree with both of you that the opportunity graduating from ASD is totally like completely like it's like so wide like you can go into like master planning, urban design, or like any even like interior design you can do it also. So like uh, by I'm when I graduate I uh, decided to work in a slightly bigger firm, a medium firm or bigger, um, and the. The project scale is also different, and the practicality of it is also different. Like in school, uh, maybe it it pushes you to like thinking outside boundary. But in the reality of the built environment now, we have like codes <laughs> and also <laughs> that, yeah. So we Ouch. learn learn to like how to to um, realize our ideas in this kind of like limit. So the limit uh, doesn't really limit us, but it uh, creates uh, creates more like opportunity. For to, for us to um, to like realize our idea, and now uh, currently I'm working on a very like a big project in like a district scale. So like um, by working in different projects in ASD itself, it really trains me to like adapt in different kind of scale from like even small. Like we also do everything. Not on, not only like we need to think about the practicality of it. Yeah. So. Thanks. It's a really large scale, yeah. Yeah, so there are endless uh, career opportunities. Uh, I mean, the training of architects is so versatile, we could do even outside architectural practice. I know of good architects who are with engineers, even architects as a developer, 
as government officials, uh, as many, many things. So there's no, sh no lack of opportunities. Uh, Megan, I'm going to ask you to comment on a few questions that um, the person who inquired is very concerned about ability to draw and sketch. Is it compulsory? Uh, and also related to this question somewhat is that uh, how much prerequisite knowledge would the person need to join ASD? Uh, last but not least, uh, is also are students required to create physical models at their projects or is there emphasis placed on rendering digital 3D models? Okay, that's a lot of questions. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, I think I'll start with the sketching question first, was it? Uh, yeah. yeah, so sketching, um, yeah. sketching isn't really a requirement, but um, I would say like there is an emphasis on sketching because the easiest way to convey an idea to your pros or to like your jurors, right, or to your client even is by drawing it out because um, there is a limit with words. Uh. You can't just keep talking and talking about your project. You still need to like visualize the space and like just what Sheng Wei said just now about drawings, right? It's like you need to have your own standards of drawings. Uh. But it's not like you need to have an arts degree to come to ASD. There, there, I came to ASD with like no no experience. I came from a JC background. So um, the sketching that I learned was actually from a sketching module, the urban sketching module that was provided to me in uh, Freshmore. And then from there, I picked up like sketching. I practiced sketching as a hobby also, like, you know, sketching like furniture, sketching people, sketching, like continue to urban sketch even in till now. Ah. And then I think the next question was about the... Uh, do you require pre-requisite uh, knowledge to join ASD? No, actually. The, we, ASD is a pretty open pillar. Uh, so I, I, like I mentioned, I came from a JC background, so I didn't really have any prerequisite, I didn't have any ex prior experience. Um, the most experience I got was from just talking to my architectural friend, architect friend, and then asking him about like architecture in NUS or SUDD. Yeah. So that was... Uh, the the that. last one is about the making physical models or... 3D rendering digital models. Okay, I would say um, that one is up to personal preference. I mean, sure, there are like cost requirements, like each uh, cost, each studio will be like your final deliverable will be a module and that will be up to the profs. Uh, but you can actually go beyond that and say like, hey, if like there's this particular like thing that I want to showcase, right, you can make a separate model for it. Or if you feel like model making isn't really your strength, you can do renderings that, so it's really up to personal preference, but I feel like ASD does prepare you for if you want to go either way. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have just about two minutes plus, so I'm going to attempt to answer the rest of the questions, <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> but please feel free to jump in if you feel passionate to add to it. So there are a few questions here kind of link and relate to each other. Uh, one question about uh, how, how are we different from NUS uh, and... The other question is about, um, okay, why don't I start from there? I think that they are kind of uh, will converge. Well, uh, I think you hear me talk about the philosophy of ASD. Uh, we believe in strongly in research and hope that our alumni uh, projects convince you that our research and our interest in solving real world problems go beyond the boundary of Singapore. We are very interested in global issues. We are interested in what threatens this earth, this world. So we let the students explore beyond that to go into areas that sometimes even ourselves as experienced professionals, we don't even have experience in. But that's where collective research makes a big difference. And that is, to my mind, the most important part of ASD that novelty and the freedom of research and learning. So if anything you cannot remember, just remember this. This is going to be our hallmark in the next uh, foreseeable future. And we continue to push this frontier outside Singapore. And we want, I mean, I'm speaking as a head of pillar, I want my graduates to be well known internationally for bringing impact, for bringing changes and solutions. So I cannot speak for NUS, I came from NUS. So I'm not going to say anything, but I hope together we actually make Singapore famous and proud. I think that's a better angle than to talk about competition. Um, so the other thing that I would say very unique characteristics of ASD is our digital savviness. Well, you see a lot more from, from Shengwei project. You don't see it 
clearly from Michelle project, but I can rest be assured it's all in there. Now I will quote an industry friend of mine. I think I can say this publicly. Uh, his name sounds very clear to Jikian, close friend of ours, CEO of DP Architects, Ji Huang. I paraphrase uh, his his quotation. He basically said to the extent that at the point of pandemic in the last two years, industry found themselves on the need to urgently transform. And digitalization is the answer to this transformation or the catalyst of this transformation. And he could find no other suitable candidates or graduates to help them transform except those on SUTD. All right. I'm not going to repeat myself, but you hear loud and clear from me. And I'm, I'm quotable. I, I quote him and you can check with him too. Because the future of architecture really can no longer be brick and mortar. It is about blending with technology, about digitalization. We took the risk 10 years ago to decide to position ASD that way. Up to five years ago, people still question, uh, why are you producing graduates who are not relevant to the industry? You focus so much on digitalization, science and technology, but all we want is your graduate to comply with codes and requirements and regulations. And we just shrug it off because we, are, we know we're ahead of the curve. Thankfully, I shouldn't say thankfully, last two years of pandemic proved that our vision was right. Now everybody is scrambling for graduates who are not only architecturally sensitive, humanities-wise sensitive about the needs of the world, but thirdly, already have the digital skills. So we are ahead of the curve, and I hope that will help you make your decision. So I'm going to uh, basically end the session with just, okay, I have two, two more minutes. I'm going to invite my panelists to just give a quick, uh, short uh, parting words to our audience. Uh, Chicken, you can go first. Uh, I'll give you all my email later. <laughs> I think really uh, the world is out there and, and I, the whole platform, the, the framework is here. So, so jump on board, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, for me, if you want to find out more the, about the program or like my experience here, like feel free to contact me as well. Um, yeah, and I, I do hope that you really consider uh, this university because it's really quite different. And if you want to find out more about differences as well, I'm, I'm more than happy to uh, give not so politically correct answers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, so if you are interested and want to know more about like how the industry and relate to ASD and also my thesis project or anything, uh, just contact me. And yeah, I really have like one of my most memorable experience in my life in SUTD actually. Yeah. So um, feel free <laughs> to join. Yeah, make it. Okay. And like, yeah, once again, if you have any questions, you can uh, find me later at the campus center. I'm like there at the booths. And also, like, uh, supporting words as somebody who's still studying SUT, I still don't regret my choice in joining ASD and SUTD. So, yeah, thank you. Well, thank you, panelists. And I noticed there's a couple more questions we didn't manage to cover, but please feel free to come forward, approach any one of us. So, thank you again for your patience. I know it's lunchtime. <laughs> and, uh, have a great time here with, uh, with us in SUTD. Thank you very much. Thank you, panelists. Thank you, Professor Tai and our esteemed guests and to the alumni. Welcome back. We've come to the end of the morning sessions here in the auditorium. Uh, next thing is lunch. So, you know, canteen's open. Go ahead. Uh, most important thing is uh, coming up next, we have the admissions and scholarship session, which is at, I think, 2. Most important thing, I need you all to vacate from this area first so we can sterilize it, you know, keep everyone safe. And for those of us who are joining us at, from home, uh, thank you very much for joining us for the Ask ASD session. We'll see you soon at around 2.30.